Team Slimmers, or do you see beyond the scale? This and so much more. Now, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for episode two of season 11 for Jassel After Dark. Now, I'm just a little boy from down the street, but for the purpose of the show, I'm your host, Jamar. Now, we're excited to be here yet again to have a candid conversation. The, these conversations are normally have every, had every Wednesday at 8 p.m. here on Jassel, live on TikTok and on Instagram. Now, Jassel After Dark is brought to you by the Jamaica Aid Support for Life. Now, we're live on the TikTok page and Instagram page for Jassel Info, and you can also follow us on both pages. So if you see what you like and you like what you're seeing, tell a friend, tell another friend, and a friend of a friend, because it helps us in the algorithm. Now, I mean, no. I'm not, you must be seeing this. Last week, we were here with myself and Calvin. Now, this week, we have our lovely co-host. She has been with us for quite some time. I would say from our eyes, the only, <laughs> our thigh. I mean, we're growing, so we get there. We have the lovely Shade. Shade Wabwan. Arch from Jesus was a boy. All right. So, <laughs> some way you're about. Good night, my lovely co-host. So, this is your girl, Shade, sex educator and proud owner of Fetish Secrets Limited. So, what's going on? Boy, I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited to be here. It's as we're still celebrating International Women's Month. Yes. Let me extend to you at yes. the International Women's well, Month. Well, thank you, thank you. And extend it to the every all the women out there. Of course, of course. All right. So this evening we'll be discussing the topic shifting the scale, the impact of weight loss on relationships. Hmm. Very interesting. Yep. So to share tonight's discussion, we have with us the doc himself. TikTok doc, TikTok boss, Dr. Alfred Dawes. Welcome, welcome, uh, welcome. Good evening, and welcome, good sir. evening to everyone out there. Yes. So, doc is a general laparoscopic and biotric surgeon. That simply means minimally invasive surgeries and weight loss surgeries, right? Yeah. Correct, doc? Yeah. All right. So, before we get into tonight's discussion, it is time for Hot Pot. Yeah. Now there are some, there are always some topics that are interesting and some that are somewhat controversial. So each week we dip into our hot pot. Let's go. I'm excited. Oh, What's inside? I'm hungry. I want something juicy to eat. How are you in the pot? It's time for hot pot. Hot pot. Hot pot. Hot pot. No, sir. This cat, you know. You know what? That's you do the honors. Hot pot. <laughs> You did the honors. All right, let's see. Uh -huh. I hope it's not too hot. Ah, so see me. You can read it. All right. Uh -huh. A baby was recently stolen at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital after the mother handed her to a stranger because her hands were tired. Do you think this was an act of carelessness on the mother's part? Or was it perfectly normal? Hmm. Was the mother careless or not? Or was it normal? What are your thoughts on this, Doc? Not yet, I've joined me also. I'm just here to read what's, what I took out of the pot. All right, so Jamara, let's hear. All right, so I, I, I honestly saw the story. I didn't get a chance to read it in depth. Mm -hmm. But now that we're on it and it, it, you're saying that she handed it to a stranger. Mm -hmm. Was it an act of carelessness on the mother's part, or was it perfectly normal? Tell us what you think. No, um, I, I, I don't want to say it's something that's careless, because if you're in the hospital, who is a stranger? That's the question that we need to find out first before we can say anything else. Because okay. it's a stranger, someone that works in the hospital, or that, per that the mother may have um, thought that it's someone that's just there to help out, due to the fact that they're tired and you just hand the baby over, help, hoping that the baby would be in safe space. You have to think about that first. I wouldn't think, I wouldn't say um, it's a careless act. To it. I say it's pretty normal. What? Yeah. I think it's careless. Why? Just that it's a carelessness. Because regardless if the person is working there, you're still a stranger. So everybody that uh, that is surrounded, you're a stranger. Like, what? No one knows, like, 
the dynamic of the space because as a mother who give birth mm -hmm. like i know my nurses that come into that room i know my caretakers right. i know my family and my relatives and my friends so if i don't know you and you're a stranger why am i gonna hand my newborn baby to you regardless if i'm tired because if i'm tired my nurse should have been there or my caretaker or a friend or a family member, I'm just saying, like, my mother, the instinct would have come out of me right. for be like, um, do you work here? Can you couldn't be the janitor? And then it's 2024 now, like, people are teeth, baby, left, right, and center. Like, there are so many things happening right. in these spaces where you so have to be careful, even though you probably wake up out of something, you, you know, when I'm saying nauseous, it is, you don't know what's happening mm -hmm. in your surrounding. So, to me, it kills us. It kills us, man. Like, well, I'm like, saying, we could do it. For, like, I get the point, Shalee, to be honest, but I'm just thinking that once we understand who this stranger is, like I said, I saw the story, didn't read it in depth, so I'm not sure who the stranger is. Until we know that part of it, I'll probably say careless or not, to be honest. That, it was so, I get the cast uh, decided what? <laughs> I'm gonna go with not careless because mm -hmm. that stranger went there with the intention of stealing a baby. Yeah. And she would have been, or he would have, but I suspect it would have been a she. she, um, she um, yeah. She would have been working on the mother. Maybe she was nice, maybe she gave her Definitely. You know, enough mm -hmm. reason to, to trust her and build her confidence that mm -hmm. she would not go away with the baby. The mother may have had uh, a rough delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't mm -hmm. know how much medication was on board and she was tired and maybe this comforting soul is offering to take mm -hmm. the baby. And Sympathy. It's, that's how confidence people mm -hmm. work. You know, con man would, would um, gain your trust first. Yeah. And, right. and you would think that uh, this is somebody who you can, even though you just met them. Mm -hmm. Some people have this whole ability to put you at ease. Definitely. And that's how they, they, they get away with all of that. So I'm going to go with not careless. Uh, not careless. Not careless. Okay, I, I can't work with that. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, as that say, just if, if all the, 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 the main person there is a stranger, once you know who that person is and mm -hmm. who they are, mm -hmm. then we're able to say you're careless or not. Right. Because if it's probably, that person probably look up, look the part of being mm -hmm. held. They're going to play the part. I'm a kind of artist. Yeah. You go there to steal the baby, you're going to play the part. Of you course. have to play. Then probably I'll dress up in a nurse outfit. They yeah, probably you just so uh, you may so never know. So as a stranger, they may do that, you know. So it can be. All right. So. Oh, we have another one in the hot pot. Oh, there's another one. Jesus. Oh wow, this is steamy. Yeah, it's kind of still one. Let me see what one. Incarcerated dancehall artist Vibe Car Vibes Cartel and his co-convicts should know their fate tomorrow. When the judgment of their murder appeal case is handed down by the Privy Council, what do you think will be the outcome after tomorrow's ruling? Not guilty. Not guilty. Not Not guilty. I think that's what I want. I honestly feel not guilty, but I'm still nervous. I'm on the edge. I'm, I'm so on the edge. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Tomorrow is either it's a retrial or he's acquitted. You know, if it goes to retrial, I hope it comes up with some of those just the same, but I hope it's acquitted. I don't know. We want to hear from the viewers. What do we <laughs> Free world boss, you think you might get free? Let us know. All right? So you can definitely reach out to us or message us on Instagram. Or you can definitely do so on WhatsApp. And the number is 876-551-5782. Or if you just want to call us, you can definitely do so as well at 876-925-0021. All right, if you're listening to Just Left at Dark, we're live on Instagram, TikTok, and remember to follow us on both platforms at Just Left Info. All right? Shade, mm -hmm. like you're still at Pink Ball, just No, because mm -hmm. I was saying four numbers. Well, yeah. yeah, the numbers, but that's fine. So, Dr. Dawes, mm -hmm. um, you'll be sharing and discussing with us shifting the scale, the impact <coughs> of weight loss on relationships, okay? So my first question to you, Doc, is what is weight loss surgery? Who needs it? And can people just eat good and exercise? Well, that's probably the question that I get asked the most. Mm -hmm. uh, why would somebody go for surgery when all they have to do is just stop eating? And uh, it's, you, you have to understand that um, weight loss is, is a very complex 
uh, process. And it's not just a matter of weight loss. It is prevention of weight regain. Mm. So I saw this meme going around that um, every cell dies, but their fat cells is immortal. And um, that is true, our fat cells, really. By the time we get to age 19, the total number of fat cells you have in the body mm -hmm. is what you're going to live with for the rest of your life. Right. And the research is, is going on right now, and so much has been shown about fat cells being active organs rather than just storage houses. They produce hormones, mm -hmm. they help to regulate your, your metabolism so that uh, when you're on a diet, the reason why you're feeling hungrier than usual is not just mind over matters, is really your body trying to produce hormones to make mm -hmm. you eat more and to slow down your metabolism. So they're active and they're always going to be there. And as you lose weight, right. uh, even though the fat cells get small in size, right. you know, moving from say a basketball or a football size to a tennis ball in size, mm -hmm. it's the same number of fat cells. And they're still going to be there wanting to put on better weight because that's just how it is. Um, and because of that challenge, what you'll find out is that once you get to a certain weight, where you have a certain amount of fat, and you usually use the BMI scale right. mm -hmm. to, to, to measure. BMI meaning your weight, to your height. So if I hear somebody's outside and um, they're 200 pounds, I want to ask next, how tall are they? Because right. if you're five feet, you know, it's a completely different person that you're talking about um, than if they're six foot tall. Oh, yeah. Right, so we use that scale, the BMI, and that number, uh, just about 25 is where you want to be. Uh, but if you're at a BMI of 40, it means that you have so much excess fat that your hormones are out of sync. You start to get insulin resistance, you start to get uh, this other hormone called leptin resistance, but at the time we can't talk about it. And um, when you lose weight, it is going to try, uh, your body's going to try and get back to that weight. So in five, ten years, your chance of success with diet and exercise is about 5%. So if I gave you a pill and say, hey, this is going to cure your headache, 5% of case in 5% of patients, you're going to get up and lose your teeth and walk out of my right. office. But yet, what we keep doing is telling people, eat right and exercise when their bodies are working against them, when their hormones are working against them. Mm -hmm. So that's where weight loss surgery comes in. And what we do is to, uh, in most instances, right now, reduce the size of the stomach. So. Mm -hmm. We, we cut out a part of the stomach, the part of the stomach that expands to get the food, um, to hold the food, and it's also the part that produces the hunger hormone, ghrelin. And once you get rid of that hormone, you eat less, maybe like a chicken leg or a chicken wing, and you're full, you can't eat anything more. And um, with those small portions, your body is forced now to go to the fat reserves and burn up the fat, and that's how you lose weight. And then because you're eating that small amount of food, and hopefully you're not eating um, peanuts and chips and so on, things that Jamaicans usually eat to, to regain weight, in my experience, you'll maintain that weight in the long term. So the chances of success with weight loss surgery um, are about 90% at mm -hmm. that five year to 10 year um, point. You do have people who regain, but it's going to be very difficult because the portion sizes are so small. And um, as I said, you know, when you are eating less and your body is adjusting the metabolism down, people wonder like, how oh, can you eat that and you don't know, disappear? Yeah. You know, it's because your metabolism has shrunk mm -hmm. to match that small amount of food. So you lose a hundred pounds and not a, an ounce more. Um, and that's how it, it really works. And then you have like the bypass that reroutes the food so you absorb less in addition to eating less. Mm. Interesting. All right, so, so that's it in a nutshell. In a nutshell, exactly. Right. Okay. Very but what are some of the common misconceptions about weight loss surgery and its effect on relationship that you've encountered in your practice? Well, the common misconceptions, um, firstly, that is a cop out. The first thing is, um, why don't you just eat, um, stop eating the food? And we, mm -hmm. did, we just went through that a while ago that mm -hmm. there are lots of hormonal changes. Um, and some people definitely do have food addictions, and it's, it's very difficult for them to overcome that food addiction. Um, but that, that's primarily the, 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 the big one. You know, mm -hmm. why don't you just um, eat right and exercise like everybody has been saying from the dawn of man, and um, right. it's just not working, which is why we have an obesity problem in the world. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but relationship problems, uh, one, the spouse may not be, the partner may not be supportive uh, because of that thinking. Oh, you don't have to do this. Um, you should just eat better and you'll be fine. Right. Um, and this is usually the case with men and women. No, men naturally have higher metabolic rates than, mm -hmm. than women. Right. And I say this all the time in my practice. The man and the woman will start the exercise program. The man just start dropping weight yeah like nothing and the woman is there so quicker yeah. i leave we're just looking like the a woman bra. is vexed mm -hmm. because you're working against the hormones mm -hmm. and you know every every time of the month you're having a period there there has increased cravings yeah um some women don't tell you about the chocolate and those mm -hmm. things are all the, the sweets the, the time yes. yes. especially with yeah. the PCOS and everything all else stuff. yeah you have PCOS and mm -hmm. insulin resistance right all of these things mm -hmm. plus men have more muscle mass naturally so when you have more muscle mass your metabolism is higher. Muscles are pumped for about 25% of your resting metabolic rate. Mm. So we're just sitting here doing not know, and we're mm -hmm. burning more calories than you are. Right. So you're at a disadvantage just sitting down. All the time. <laughs> and, 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 All the time. So if the man is not supportive, then that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And you made mention of the fact that, you know, men, we do lose weight more than women. Is it because of they have the adipose fat as well? Uh, well, um, it's our resting metabolism is higher because mm -hmm. of the higher muscle mass. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, two, we don't deal with the, the monthly cravings because, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I made a, a video about it, um, that women should not go to the supermarket when they're seeing their periods because <laughs> at that time, <laughs> at that time, your hormones have a greater influence mm -hmm. on you. Right. And, and it's what you pick up. You're more right. prone to impulse buying at that time. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, don't eat when you're hungry. It sounds counterintuitive, but when you're hungry, you tend to eat more, you tend to work, make worse yes, decisions, right. yes. mm -hmm. and you overeat because it takes a little while for the hormone levels of hunger to fall, so you realize that you eat until the belly bust. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. those are some of the things. But one of the other big things mm -hmm. um, that, that happens with, with weight loss, massive weight loss, is that insecurities come out and hype comes out. Right. Mm -hmm. So you may use to somebody who is big or is fluffy, and, and that's um, my next question to you, Doc. All of <laughs> you a know? sudden, yeah. they're getting all of this attention. Mm -hmm. And human beings are very shallow. And I've had patients tell me that um, their careers have taken off since they've lost the weight. Um, they, the people treat them differently. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting a lot of attention. And for some of them, they can't deal with it. It's the first right. they're getting so much attention and they're used to people hitting on them and all of that. And then they start acting. Um, or they want to live their best lives. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things that we counsel our patients with. Right. Um, is that after weight loss surgery and massive weight loss, you have a higher rate of divorce. Right. And that has been borne out. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, the, the, the partner may get jealous right. and overprotective. So what advice do you give to those patients and their partners in navigating the emotional and physical change that happens? Well, knowing what to expect mm -hmm. is, is a, a big part of it. So right. um, part of the workup is the psychologist would, would be going through. And it's usually better if you do um, a couple's session at least mm -hmm. one time and right. to talk to um, the partner. But you do have some people who are coming and they don't want the partner know that they're doing the surgery. <laughs> You know, just mm -hmm. tell them that they're fixing a her, and I'm like, I can't do that. Right. But, you know, they don't tell the partner what exactly they're doing. And then you reach in a situation where the partner may get concerned that, oh, she barely eating. It's mm -hmm. always a woman. So would you say that's a trend or a pattern No, you know, that you've been seeing in the weight loss Some, surgery, in sometimes. different types of relationships, you know? Like yes. they're not telling their partner whether it's their friend, an intimate partner, you know, family or stuff like that. Is that now a trend or a pattern? I see it often enough mm -hmm. to, to, to um, know that wherever a partner, they may have discussed it mm -hmm. with a partner before mm -hmm. and um, they don't get the support. It's like, oh no, just go to the gym and you'll be fine. So they just decide that, all right, you're not getting it. Right. So let me just do it because I know my body, I know what um, I need to do mm -hmm. to get it right. And you may have that, um, they don't say anything. Right. They come in, do the surgery, go home. And the partner might be there, and the partner don't ask, and I so don't. What is tell. the healing process like? Because when you do the surgery and then you go home, like what is the healing process like? Especially if you're living with your partner, 
you know, what uh, is that? Like, they didn't know that you're going to do the surgery, but when you reach home now and you're in the space, like, how you navigate that with your partner? Um, well, your, your recovery time isn't that bad. Okay. Because it's really <laughs> one night in hospital. Mm. You know, I, I don't know what they tell the So I was just about to say that. So I'm going to tell my partner. <laughs> mind, the, I'm not giving anybody any ideas, oh, but they okay. might say that they did gallbladder surgery <laughs> or they did um, mm -hmm. reflux surgery or, or something. They say like something. Because from something. a sickness, I sickness. Right. Yeah. Because it's the same thing. Your partner is just going to say a couple holes in the belly. Mm -hmm. And you went into the hospital yesterday. Mm -hmm. You're out today. So clearly it can't be anything major. That's when they think bariatric right. surgery because of the name, they think it's some massive thing that you do. So mm -hmm. you're home and you're just drinking, but what may give them away, I don't know how to explain it, is that you just eat very tiny portions. So you're you're eating maybe mm -hmm. like a, a chicken leg or a chicken wing. And and that's it. And that's <laughs> okay. it. That's it. You can't that's eat anything good. more. All right, Doc, I hear you. But here comes a patient coming in right not telling their partner like how do you like support the patients in communicating with their partner in saying listen yeah, even though they're not getting the support you know yeah, in what, some man? sense like always, you know how you communicate with them to say okay this is the decision that i want to you know undergo such surgery because of this because of that even or put it in the case where their partner don't support them but mm -hmm. you know you still want them to communicate that with their partner like, how do you navigate that with the patients? My primary loyalty is mm. to the patient. And that's where doctor-patient <laughs> confidentiality and that's stops. It. So you, you don't know, encourage them I, to I, communicate? I ask them to communicate. I okay. beg them sometimes. Okay. And, and this happens so often that mm -hmm. I can use multiple examples. Right. Um, the partner will call and they're concerned and um, they're trying not to give out too much information over the phone. You know? But mm -hmm. she's not eating. And I'm like, well, you know, at this stage, she can't eat. Um, she's just drinking as part of the, the recuperation process. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to say, well, she's on liquid diet now for um, a week. And Busting. then she's got, yeah, you know, you, you, you can't read it. But you still call, hey, you know, you need to talk to them. Mm -hmm, and let mm -hmm. them know what's going on. Okay. Now, well, let me ask you this, um, there, because you that's a very good question, mm -hmm. and I was wanted to know. But is it a case where, say, for example, you know someone with a high stomach and they come inside and you do the surgery? What's the result? Is it that coming flat? No, flat, flat, flat. Yeah, yeah but you see, no, that would be the problem because Shade come to be a Shade in a relationship. I mean, no Shade, just saying, mm -hmm. with a high stomach and Shade mm -hmm. do the surgery. She didn't, she didn't tell me about it. And then no, she comes in. I'm like, who is this? Where is the tummy that I'm that I am used to? But Shade will be walking around drinking green juice around every day. Just <laughs> and, and getting so up and going to the gym. And then all of a sudden this person who used to be eating all of this food and, and why so it's a process. Happens, it's so a they process. start so with eating see, good, so working on that green juice. And um why this is like <laughs> Is this wrong for me to be giving people all of the tips on how to the surgery? We need thing? to hear it. We need yeah, that raw, candid conversation. Like, they need the to know. No, no, people do it. I look at someone right now who did the surgery, mm -hmm. right? Um, still don't finish paying me for my surgery yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's out there telling people about eating right and exercising. And I'm like looking, I'm like, the audacity. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. and, and encouraging people. That you know, all you have to do is you just put your mind to it, right? And eat the smaller portions and exercise. You know, I did it and I lost all of this weight, and I'm like, yo, it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's but, but it's it's a process where you start off before they they, they start drink the the green juice, mm -hmm. yes, and and then people get used to them eating small portions before, mm -hmm. and then so seeing them, you know, how you manage this thing, so it's all you know, it's a mindset. You know, mental thing. You, mm. you have to be stronger than your, your urges and your cravings, and they do it. So they have to put on a show, then. Basically. They put on a but show. That, and but that's what I'm talking about. Um, when you're in a relationship and you're Wait, living, it's the same thing. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the you same can thing. You your coworkers. You so imagine we both live together, and I get up and go to the gym. So shall we not pay attention to what you're it, telling me? But you still, you know what? You kind of listen. Because they, I don't know. I guess because of the, the, the height and the stuff will me a picture. No, but it's slowly going down. It's just that it, all right, what you're seeing her, mm -hmm. the question in your head is this. Belly. How is she eating? She moved from eating three eggs. 
because you only eat yeah, one, one egg and a half a, and a half a toast. Yeah. And she's gonna be like, no, you know, I. It's dieting and exercise. Mm-hmm. That's it's, just my program. My trainer put me program. on this program. And probably cost the, and the trainer. You probably start cost the trainer too. Mm-hmm. But it you're gonna happen. see. You're gonna see results. And um, it's it does happen more often than than you would think. So my brothers know that we know. Let's pay attention. Okay? Yeah, of course, know that we know. No, but I, I and always... ladies have to pay attention too. Yes. Oh. Well, yeah. pay attention, pay attention. Because no, the problem with the ladies complaining you know, is that the men get hype and start going out and the attention that they get from the How ladies. How does that affect intimate straight. relationships though? That self-esteem now that they're having after surgery, you know, yeah. you, have, you have flat stomach, look at abs, maybe, and you start to feel good because it's like a boost of confidence. It's like it a boost does. self-esteem it's... and everything. You start to look different, you feel different, you act different in your sexual relations and your mm-hmm. intimate relations, your romantic. So how does that affect all of that? Improves. Everything gets improved. Mm-hmm. You'll be surprised um, how much. So like I'll tell patients about the... The, the health benefits right. you're, you're gonna live, um, you're improving your lifespan by 12 years, 12, um, 12% or whatever that works out to be. Mm-hmm. Less chance of diabetes, less chance of hypertension, heart disease, stroke. Uh, if you have them, you can cure them. Mm-hmm. But what they'll tell you is that the men will tell that the erections are stronger. Yeah. Um, the, the, the sex life gets better. Mm-hmm. Um, the women have more confidence. You know, you hear stories like, um, um, we're making love with the lights on. No, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, simple things like that, you know, when they're going out and, and so on. It, it doesn't make you happy. Um, happiness comes from within you, mm-hmm. but the, the self confidence and the, the change in your body. So, a simple thing like um, for men, the excess fat mm-hmm. would convert the testosterone that you produce into estrogen, which is a female yeah. hormone. Yeah. And uh, that estrogen can cause you to develop um, what they call man boobs, or it may decrease your sex drive, it mm. may decrease your um, your overall, you know, um, strength and, and, and um, endurance. Right. So when you lose all of that excess fat and you have greater levels of testosterone, your manhood, everything will, will improve. Mm. So it heightens so the attraction and the supportiveness. So they don't support you before surgery, but then they support you after surgery. Yeah, so that's a narrative. Around. Everybody comes around. That's a narrative. Around. Everybody comes around. Okay. Oh, wow. So how do you address concerns from patients about, you know, potential change in their partner's attraction and supportive, um, follow, supportiveness following weight loss surgery? It's education. Mm-hmm. Um, but they... So, so when you know and expect something, mm-hmm. it's a little bit different from it. Uh, occurring outside of your consciousness so you may subconsciously start to watch your partner a little bit more your jealousy and so on may go up but then they may say see same thing dr Dara said and then it kind of catches you and you no 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 that's not it so yep that's it it's the same thing he said that's gonna happen that's mm-hmm. happening so you bring whatever emotions and the undercurrent that may be driving uh your decisions to the consciousness, and once you're aware of something and conscious of it, that is where behavioral changes take right. place. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of these things are um, something that I've had to learn on the job and from my patients' experiences. You know, they don't really teach you um, this stuff, uh, but you see a lot of it panning out, mm-hmm. and um, you, you, you see the broken relationships. Right. Um, patients who are single, they have a higher rate of getting married. Mm. Um, but you, you, you've seen some cases, and I mean, there was one unfortunate case. Um, a patient did surgery, lost weight, fixed up her body, everything, and the, the relationship just went downhill. Uh, they said that the guy became very possessive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a younger guy, she was older. And uh, they thought that she, he thought that she was going to leave him for another woman. And it, the relationship ended with a murder and suicide mm-hmm. some years ago. Um, he killed her, and then when he locked himself in the house, and then after, and they said that it's a lot of that relationship trouble began after um, she started yeah, yeah. to fix up herself. 
Okay. That's why it's some amount of insecurity. All of this stuff is, is second hand information right. that I, I got. But um, I do know that the relationship trouble started after mm -hmm. she, she lost me. That's very, very unfortunate. Um, it is. And uh, I, I wish that some intervention would have been done. Do you have any success stories or insights on patients with a more positive experience that you could oh, probably yeah. share with us? Yeah, definitely. Please. I mean, <laughs> so you have, I, I think maybe the, the greatest success stories are the ones where um, they, like, some women would have come in to lose weight in order to have kids. Mm -hmm. And they get the baby pictures mm -hmm. and all that oh, and how they're growing up mm -hmm. and everything. Um, because the PCOS goes, the fertility increases, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but there are a lot of, a lot of success stories. Mm -hmm. Um, one of my patients now he said that how it affected their relationship the success stories positive 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 okay. yeah. yes. you know because imagine you as a couple mm -hmm. trying to get pregnant and mm -hmm. all of the stress and then all of a sudden we lose the weight <laughs> and bam you know it's like all your dreams <laughs> mm -hmm. have just come through like that so it's um those are the stories that that i like um and then simple things you you, you start to take more trips yeah. Uh, one patient told me that you know when he was traveling, he used to be two seats for a first class. Aww. So right now it's not as expensive to travel. And one the seat. biggest regret, I mean, even today, one of my patients came in. She sat down and was like, "Why, Doc? My biggest regret is that I never do this long time." Oh. You know, because mm -hmm. everything has changed in their life. Um, I guess the energy and not worried about. Um, Sickness, mm -hmm. simple things like when you go out, you're not looking to see if your chair is sturdy enough. Um, mm. Simple things that we never things that really think about. Insecurity and stuff, yeah. right? And uh, a lot of people hide their insecurities mm -hmm. with just being jovial and so on, but it's, it's still there. So, Doc, there's this trend going around now, the Ozempic, right? What are your thoughts on the Ozempic? Because a lot of persons are using it now to lose this weight so fast, so quick. And then they feel like, oh, I'm going to take it, lose the weight, go in gym a little bit. And what are your thoughts on this? Is it negative, positive? Like, what, what, what are your thoughts? Um, Do you recommend it? Do you don't recommend it? Like, yeah. Well, I, I recommend it. I, mm -hmm. I have patients who have put on mm -hmm. Um I have tried it myself. Ooh. And um, it does work. Mm -hmm. It works very well. What it does, it's... it's um, it slows the release of food from the stomach. Yeah. And what that does is to run as I said, like when your stomach is empty, it produces more hunger hormones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have food in your stomach, uh, for a lot normally the food will be emptied out in four or six hours. You know you're talking about eight hours. Mm -hmm. And your food is still in the stomach. So you're just not hungry. Yeah. So you don't want to eat. So even if you have the food in front of you, you start picking at it, you feel full. Mm -hmm. um, and with that now you're taking in less calories and it forces your body to burn. Does it work for everyone so everybody can Most take people. the Ozempic? I do have some patients on it where you have them on the higher doses and it's still not mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. uh, the other way it works is that it stops or it helps to suppress cravings. Mm -hmm. So people who smoke cigarettes, they find out that they stop smoking. People who are gambling and stuff. Um, but most times it, it, it works. The problem is this. Because you're taking in less food, and this even happened with me, if you don't keep up with your protein intake, mm -hmm. you're going to lose muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And if you lose muscle mass, your metabolism falls. If your metabolism falls and you come off the Ozempic, you're gonna put on even more weight yeah, yeah. than you lost. So it's just like any other starvation diet, you know, the big fat a couple of year, years ago was the HCG. Mm -hmm. It's one of the worst diets ever. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I've seen so many patients who, who did it and then they came back much worse. So that's the problem. If you're doing Ozempic with somebody who doesn't appreciate uh, the importance of preserving muscle mass, you're going to run into problems. Um, long term as well, there's a thing called uh, the Ozempic Plateau, mm -hmm. where after 18 months, mm -hmm. um, you just don't lose any more weight. Oh. And the, the, the danger is that that 18 months, mm -hmm. when you hit that wall, um, what's your metabolism like? Mm -hmm. Have you lost a lot of muscle mass? Or have you mostly lost fat? Mm -hmm. And because you kept up with your protein intake, you still have muscle mass, so your metabolism isn't that bad. 
that's what's going to determine long-term success. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to replace bariatric surgery. <laughs> because when you, you come off, you remember it's two things. One thing is weight loss, the other one is the prevention of weight regain. Mm -hmm. um, the social issues are still going to be there. Right. Um, food cravings, um, and then your metabolism is still going to be there, wanting to put on back the weight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you're at a high BMI, I, I would recommend it. Uh, the greatest success I've seen with Azemtica people who want to lose maybe about 30, 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. But with the higher BMI patients, I still recommend surgery. Okay. All right. So that's very good information. <laughs> this is yes. Oh, very good information. No quick fix. It's no quick yeah, fix. Exactly. Yeah. It's not express. Love right. that. Just reminding you guys to follow us also on Instagram and TikTok at Info. All right. No doc. <laughs> So what are some of the un unexpected benefits and challenges in one's sex life, you know, post or last surgery? Well, um, as one patient said, you know, you get friskier. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing. Uh, sex drive usually improves, right. uh, self-confidence improves. Again, and um, as much as we may, well, you may have a change. So some people may like, may prefer the, the fluffy, as you, mm -hmm. you said at the start of the show. So when you see this new person coming home every day who is not that fluffy person you fell in love with and you're attracted to, uh, yeah, that may pose a problem. You get to know this new person. And then there is still the issue of loose skin. Mm -hmm. Means you lose a lot of weight, mm -hmm. um, even though your skin will contract. Uh, you still may have a lot of loose skin, and some people may not like that loose skin. Mm -hmm. So. Are they going to do cosmetic surgery, do a whole bunch of nip and tucks, breast lifts, all of that stuff? Um, they may then become self-conscious if they don't do that because of the loose skin. So it's swapping one element oh, of self-consciousness mm -hmm. for, for another. another. And then that may affect their sex life as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think they experience like new fantasies or desires like after that significant weight loss? I don't prove that much. You don't prove that much. <laughs> a, but have your but patients they, have they shared, said it to you, like, you know? They, they do share that the, yeah. the, the sex life has improved. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of that, um, as I said, you know, with men, testosterone levels go up. Okay. Um, to, you know, people for the change, they might find the partners um, more attractive, if, especially if they lose the weight in the right areas. Um, and then you may have, um, you know, because you're going out more, you know, some people may want to go out more because of the, the change in you know, how the clothes fit, etc. And um, that may just reignite a lot of passion. Like dating so themselves again, this new person. All sad and all, yeah. All yeah, because they still have to get used to the new body. Yeah, yeah. smile on it and all that kind of <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but then also that because now we're talking about an entire new person, it therefore means that because if I'm if you're used to someone that's on the chubby side and they would have been dressing accordingly, understand? So now for that change, have you ever heard any um, concerns or you know patients talking to you about like what the process is to re to the whole the world, 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 world. Mm -hmm. oh, Yeah, one of the things I tell patients that don't buy too much clothes at one point in time. Because you're going to realize this thing, it changes so much. And the rate at which you lose weight, I've seen patients lose as much as 30 pounds in one month. Um, so you don't want a whole lot of clothes. Right. And then you're going to end up with. But what, what happens a lot of times is that they may have been saving clothes from one size <laughs> that they want to fit in again. So they're, they're good at that. Um, or they may take in clothes. And Mm -hmm. they the tailor just make until they get tired of them and yeah, this is not working out, just get some new clothes. Uh, but they do make the, the adjustments in terms of the, the clothes. Yeah, but the, the important thing is not to buy too much at one time. And then the other thing that, that may happen with the, the wardrobe is what I, I call phantom fat syndrome. Yes. Where you lose the weight, but in your head, you still at that mm -hmm. weight. So mm -hmm. people might tell you, you know, why, why are you still looking at size 16 clothes when you should be looking at a size 12? But they can't reconcile in their head that they're this smaller person now. Mm -hmm. So they ought to be looking at different clothes. So they may be wearing baggy clothes 
and not realize that it's not really them because when they look in the mirror, they're still seeing that person who was wearing those big clothes. Right, and that also affects them sexually. Like Larry mentioned that point too because they will still, while having sex, a lot of them don't really get that self-confidence. They still want to have sex in the dark because yeah. they're not used to that new body as yet. They're not as comfortable as yet, so they're yeah. still doing all of that sexually. But do you think, like, does the weight loss surgery impact the libido or the sexual performance? I think so. that same with, the, it does? with the hormonal levels, mm -hmm. it does. With the, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Doc, to be honest, these, like, like nuggets all together, but let me ask you this. So you're, because you did say earlier on that the, the, um, the surgery, you'd say, do it more than the, what's the name of the thing, the ESCO? You call the name as well. What? I was saying neutral when you were explaining it, when you said it suppresses the hunger and allow the food to leave your stomach on a slower rate. Those Those MP. Those MP. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, what I'm hearing and what I'm understanding from what you're saying is that even though the surgery is good, it also requires for a lot of um, psychology work to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does, because if you're saying that you know, you'd have done the surgery, and you're still not used to you know what you've done and you're still dressing according to how you would have been before and it's going to have um, issues in the relationship and that's why I think also it is important because you said something earlier as well that I wanted to piggyback on when you said that um, you know you gave the the entire scenario how it happens and what can be done and the sex drive and the confidence but having that conversation is important because if the conversation was not had, then it leads to something like the murder that you made mention of before. Yeah, you know, um, a big part of um, behavioral uh, change mm -hmm. and, and uh, being conscious of the behavior is, is education. And yeah. that's what the, the pre-surgery counseling sessions are really about. You know, this may happen, that may happen. Uh, your friends are gonna treat you differently, but when they do that, don't resent them for being shallow when you had on the weight, it's just human nature. Your partner may start, you know, as I said, preview you some more. Don't, don't get offended, don't snap at them. Uh, understand that it's a part of the, the process. Um, you may have the entire household eating better because you're eating better, you know? So it, it's like a halo effect where, where one person undergoes surgery, the whole house loses weight. Uh, so you have that responsibility to know of carrying your entire family uh, in terms of your, your weight loss. You know, that's additional pressure on you, but it can affect your relationship with your kids, with your, your partner, you know, other family and friends. Mm -hmm. And um, that's an awesome responsibility because having made that decision to change your life, you're changing the trajectory of other lives mm -hmm. as well. And I've seen some instances where, you know, um, the kids will have been chubby and the, the mother did surgery. And then when you look, Everybody lose weight, or the kids come and they want to be go on a program, mm -hmm. not the surgery, but they may start the, the Ozempic or the balloon or one of those other programs, and then you know, you see their successes coming from looking at the the parent um, who did very well and, and inspired them. So nice. So, what advice do you have for couples struggling to maintain the intimacy? during one partner's weight loss journey? What advice do you give for those couples? Um, you know, why, why is there a problem with intimacy? Overall, it's a question. Mm -hmm. Is it desirability? Mm -hmm. you know, if it's desirability, where you, you miss your fluffy spouse, mm -hmm. then that's a problem. That's going to be a serious problem because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the chemistry and, and everything has to do with what you look at and what you feel um, and everybody has their their own concept of, of what they find sexually attractive uh, so that one is going to be hard if your partner is no longer who you um, who you fell in love with and who you're sexually attracted to uh, but in a lot of cases you know it would have been the weight gain after kids or the weight gain after you know that they grow older that led to one partner being overweight so when they lose the weight they go back to that original person who they, they were in their relationship with at the start mm -hmm. uh, so desirability is, is is really where we ought to start mm -hmm. 
But if it is something else, like an undercurrent of emotion, such as insecurity, mm -hmm. right. that's causing that, then that's something that you just have to work on. You just have to get some counseling. Um, the, the partner has to reassure the, them that they, they are not going anywhere. You know, Just yes, me. more people are looking at me. Yes, more people calling to me and, and all of that. But I am I'm still here. I'm still the same person and we're not doing anything. Yeah, because me territorial and what's mine is mine. I understand so I don't <laughs> want to have Shadi going out and person like I don't mind persons are looking at Shadi, but me I feel some type of way because yeah. you know, Shadi was my comfort, she was my what I call it, comfort that no Shadi I give a quilt by it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good, but I'm nice, you know. Right. Right. You're, you're <laughs> gone with your friends every day. Mm -hmm. right. A different, different person coming home mm -hmm. in the evenings. But then that comes the communication between couples, it too, because if I was fluffy then, and then here comes I do surgery, we'd have communicated that in some sense, to know to expect this, you know, and expect this kind of um, dynamic that is going to now come up on us in such structure, so. I think communication is key, yeah, right there. It is, because if you're going to do the surgery and you're not going to talk about it, that's kind of crazy because all that new changes are going to come and we're going to be faced with it. How do we deal with it then when it arises? You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, they say, no, they say every good relationship is one that has overcome struggles. Definitely. So people who live in this fear tier relationship and they have never and I fight. Oh, we never fight. I worry about people like that, you know, because you don't know how to problem solve. You don't know how somebody, you know, upset you and you, you don't want to chat to them for days, but then you're still in the same space, so you have to work it out, and then you find a way to coexist even when you're not into each other. And, mm -hmm. uh, emotions fluctuate, love fluctuates. If you talk to the, the older Persons who have made it to, to 50 odd years together and so on. They'll tell you something you're really not into your partner, but they become your friend until it grows back again. You know, if the desire goes and comes, and um, the, the true strength of the relationship is, is going to be shown when there are external forces. Our internal forces like weight loss causing a disruption in your day to day. You know? Right. Okay. But I'm no relationship expert, you know, I just listen to. Oh. You would have been faced with it because, I mean, if you have to... At some point, Doc, yeah, at some you point, know, you have to advise your patient to say, listen, I recommend this, I can advise you this, X, Y, Z, communicate like this. some point, it's not your expertise, but you know. Let me, Dr. Phil. <laughs> what happened is marriage and everything, huh? <laughs> and seeing that you said earlier as well that you know you're for the patient i mean with all the experience and the nuggets that you've shared here tonight i think it's something that you should probably tell them like even though you're for the patient you want know, it's a conversation that you, you should have that yeah, yeah because it's, it's better. important it it's is better. at some point in time it's, it's gonna come out and um it's it's better to to, to be honest and forthright you know mm. and changes are almost in relationships and with people because that's how we evolve so, okay. I mean, if we're in a relationship where we can't talk about this, it, you would have been doing the surgery for your benefit, and I can benefit in turn from it, you know? So once we have that understanding, and once we talk about it and just put it out there, I may not be so, you know, easy with it at first, but if I sit down from my personal experience, um, I may just sit down, think about it, and be like, okay, let's do it. You may never know. Just have the conversation, I believe, yeah. Shade, right? Because a lot of times it's really health Definitely. reasons why you're doing it. You know, mm -hmm. Because the, the health benefits are amazing. You know, every time you see somebody uh, who has been on medication for years and after surgery, they never took one more pill or they took their last insulin shot just before they went into surgery and that's it. The insulin completely after. It's just amazing, you know. And, um, it's something that we, we need to embrace more and get rid of this cultural stigma. Yeah, stigma to say that it's it's your fault and, and you could have done it on your own. Well I I'm sure and I do hope that with the information that you've shared we can now have a different insight. Because I didn't even know some of the things that you shared. And um, you now I encourage, you know, said person to do it. Doc, you know what I want to ask you before you leave? You mentioned the balloon method. What exactly is the balloon method? 
Okay, so the balloon is a temporary weight loss solution. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's literally a silicone balloon, silicone like what they used to make breast implants, right. uh, medical grade, mm -hmm. and you put it through your mouth into your stomach, mm -hmm. inflate it to about 500 mm -hmm. mils, that's about the size of a, a soda bottle. Mm -hmm. It sits in your stomach for a year. Oh, and well, the one I use is for a year. They have six month balloons, so mm -hmm. they don't work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it stays in for a year and then works similarly to, to the Ozempic, where mm -hmm. food stays in the stomach longer and then you have this big ball in the stomach, your body thinks that it's food, so you right. don't get as hungry. Mm -hmm. And then when you eat, because it takes up space, you don't take in as much mm -hmm. food as you, you know. Okay. Okay. So you can lose weight, um, 50, 60 pounds. But most I've had somebody lose weight. Um, with, and I think that's a record because when I spoke to the, the manufacturer, they said that they hadn't uh, seen anybody lose so much as 125 pounds uh, in a year. Then after the year is done, you deflate the balloon, put it up back through the mouth. Mm. Okay, so there's no downtime, no surgery, no recovery. No, nothing. Okay. That one is easier to hide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even well. I remember we mentioned um, the prospect. And the biatric, right? Like we didn't discuss like a procedure for that. We talked about what it was and what it do, and you know the effects and all of that. But could you at least go through the procedure with us on that? And the the, the lead up to it or the actual surgery? The actual, actual surgery, surgery of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I usually do these surgeries laparoscopically, mm -hmm. um, meaning that we just make some small holes mm -hmm. uh, and they put in some tubes. The, the belly and um, we're putting a camera mm -hmm. and that camera now is what we use to, to look at where we're operating um, it's broadcast on a screen that so we're it's like playing a video game really mm -hmm. so you're looking at the screen and you move your hands on it we use some instruments which are like really long chopsticks now imagine <laughs> taking the shoelace yeah. with a chopstick with two chopsticks right. and Oh. Not looking directly at it, looking up. So it's, it's technical, but mm -hmm. I mean, once you get your practice here, you're pretty okay with it. And that's what we use now to cut the stomach. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so we use some device called staplers, so we clip and cut the stomach all the way around uh, to a standard size. Mm -hmm. And then what I usually do after that is um, I get some stitches and stitch that cut in of the stomach, mm -hmm. just to add another layer of reinforcement to decrease the chance of it popping open or bleeding. Mm -hmm. And after that now, um, we a piece of stomach, because it's shrunken down, we pull it out through one of the holes that we widen. Mm -hmm. And then we close the holes, and that's it. You know, okay. you're, the next day you start drinking, um, and if you're fine not vomiting, then you can go home. That's the gastric sleeve, the VSG, that's the most common one that's right. done. The other one called the bypass, we basically cut the stomach in two. And then we take a bit of intestines and we attach it to the stomach so the food would leave from the mouth into the gullet into the that top part of the stomach which mm -hmm. is about four ounces mm -hmm. straight into that piece of intestines and then it bypasses this is what i call the gastric bypass mm -hmm. a, a, a set loop of intestines instead of going all the way through the stomach and going around mm -hmm. we shortcut it by putting a piece of intestine on directly on the mm -hmm. stomach so if I want to bypass a long segment or a short segment, I can determine how much food I don't want you to absorb. So you're eating less food and absorbing less food. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will lead to a significant So the time is like a week? Same, or yeah, a week. a week. I mean, I have some bad rock patients. I had one lady, <laughs> she left hospital and went straight to the bank to do her business. Like, you can't do that. She's like, what do you think you're going to get paid? My business has to go on. Mm -hmm. But that's the good thing and the bad thing about laparoscopy because you see, it's just some small holes that you're seeing on the outside. It's not a lot of recovery. But right. then, um, the bad thing is that people think, don't really remember that it's still big surgery that yeah, takes place yeah. on the, mm -hmm. the inside. Does it make a difference if that person actually works out? I think the surgery? I'm pretty so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what you were saying. Yeah. Not yeah. Does it, it make a difference if the person works out? Like you know. Yeah, we always does? we always yeah. recommend that um, patients work out, especially mm -hmm. the weights. Weight training is one of the most underrated exercises. We think that when we want to lose weight, we ought to be doing a bunch of cardio. 
Um, but when you do weight training, you're building muscles. Yeah. And that is what is going to make you do, you end up in the fat loss zone rather than overall weight loss because the, the fat loss zone is where you preserve your muscles and um, you lose the fat versus weight loss where you lose muscles and fat. Mm. I see. So are there any circumstances where surgery is like definitely not recommended, where you wouldn't recommend it? Yeah, I mean, I get some really sick patients sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and the, the workup we have to do a lot of medical tests um, for the heart, um, to assess the, the, the lungs. Some people with really bad sleep apnea, where they, they have to literally uh, sit, sleep, um, sit, sleep sitting up in a chair. Uh, some people may have heart failure, where they have to take tablets in order to pee, um, otherwise they just swell up. Um, so we do get some really sick patients, um, and um, if we can't optimize them, uh, you know, make their heart stronger, etc., then we, we wouldn't proceed with surgery. So you have to get clearance from an internal medicine doctor before we say, all right, yeah, let's let's go ahead. And in some instances, we we just advise them, you know, it's it's not worth it. To go ahead, you know, just do high risk. And what's that reception like when you have to give them that news that, hey, this is just not for you? Um, you just explain it, you know, that it's the surgery, it's always a balance. The surgery is always a balance with, with those patients, which is why it's always better to, to do the surgery before you develop these complications. Uh, but should you reach that stage where you have all of these complications, then an honest um, discussion to say, well, you know, if you're a high risk patient and we may not have the, the support for you afterwards in terms of ICU and so on. Because in the private sector, we don't have any ICU mm -hmm. um, support. That's something that we hope to change. Um, sure. Shameless plug, I'm building a hospital mm -hmm. in Portmore. So we need it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're we're going to um, have all of that mm -hmm. uh, you know, high dependency unit afterwards so we can take in more of these sick patients. But if we you have that discussion and it's like, no, we don't think that we should proceed based on the, the challenges we may have afterwards, and they usually accept it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's for their benefit. Good. Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation when, mm -hmm. you know, what is killing you is the weight, but we can't do the surgery to get off the weight because of complications. So you're pretty much just telling them that, you know, they're on their own. Um, and, 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 and exercise won't help at any point. Uh -huh. Sometimes they uh, really can't. Uh -huh. um, Not to burn no. excess weight, mm. but just to keep active so the body can Some function. Some people really move. You know, I mean, you, you have patients at 500 and 600 pounds. You know, they're pretty much it's in It's a process. It's a process. Yeah. I mean, in cases, so. I've, I've had patients where I've had to put in a balloon, get them down to you know, under 500 pounds when they're, they can fit on a hospital bed and then they, they do the surgery um, to lose another 200 pounds or so. Um, I had one patient um, last year who had to use two hospital beds in order for him to, to fit on it. Um, and he's down about 150 pounds now, months later, and he's happy that he can't find. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, 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 this was a very stimulating conversation. It was. I wish we could go much longer, but we can't. I want to thank you. Thank you so much for such informative discussion. Candid and very raw. You know, at least people know our viewers have an insight on this weight loss journey because I know a lot of them wondering, okay, where do I go? How do I go about this? What is the surgery like? So now they can actually go and research and actually hear it from you. Uh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot. I hope our viewers have learned a lot. And we want to thank you so, so much for taking the time to be with us and share with us such insightful information tonight. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs> you. All right. And remember that if you haven't gotten tested since 2024, visit us here at JASL and get your free HIV and syphilis test done today. All right. Now, as we come and yeah. we really want to thank you guys for viewing and remember to spread the word 
because yes, it's candid conversation, but it's also insightful conversation, mm -hmm. informative kind of confirmation, and you don't get this every day. You know, it's one on one, and we, as again, we want to thank you, Doc, for coming in and sharing all the information there is. All so right. of course. Or we can talk or discuss during the day. We will discuss it after dark. All right. So good night. See you next week. Can't wait. Doc.